All right, so you got the hang of graphing one line, then you feel like it's pretty simple. Until just then. Your teacher asks you to graph two lines and find the point of intersection. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you the trick to taking these and making them do this so that you can find that. Graphing two lines is no different than graphing one line, aside from, you know, there's two of them. But let's not let that scare us off. Let's start by looking at this first line. Luckily, this line is in slope intercept form, meaning we can easily pick out the slope of negative one half and the y intercept of four. To graph this line, we can start by plotting a point at the y intercept of four. Our slope tells us that we're going to rise negative one or drop by one unit, then run by two. So we move down one and right two from our y-intercept. So using this slope to move from this first point allows us to plot another point right here at two, three. And hey, if we want, we can actually go backward from the y-intercept by rising one and running negative two or going backward by two units. So we actually have another point at negative two, five. Connecting these points with a straight line and we have the graph of y equals negative half x plus four. Yes, but that's one line. I already know how to do that, my guy. Patience, peaches, patience. Plotting the second line is a little bit more complex. And the reason for that is that this line is not in slope intercept form. This is what we call standard form of line. And standard form doesn't make it easy for us to find the slope or the y-intercept. But even standard form is no match for the awesome power of algebra. Since slope-intercept form has y by itself, we want to make this standard form line look that way by solving for y. We use algebra here to first subtract 6x to the other side. Next, we divide by 3 on both sides, and there you have it, slope-intercept form. Now the rest of this process is exactly the same as what we did before. We start by plotting the y-intercept, which in this case is 1, and we use our slope of negative 2 to find a few other points on our line. The last step is connecting these points with a straight line and my goodness, they intersect. What we have here is a point of intersection or the point that happens to fall on both lines. In this case, the point is negative two, five. And you can see that each line does in fact pass through this point. So the solution to this linear system is x equals negative two, y equals five, or the point negative two, five. Now making mistakes in math is kind of scary, which is why my favorite part about these problems is that you can check your answer. To make sure this point of intersection does in fact fall on each line, we can take the x value of negative two and the y value of five and substitute them back into each equation. What should happen is that you get a true statement in each case, which we do. So solving a linear system by graphing isn't really all that scary at all, is it? Well, not really, no, in a world where your teacher is going to let you solve every linear system by graphing. Unfortunately for you, we don't live in that world, which is why you're going to want to head over to the next video so that you can learn about the dreaded substitution.